Hello and welcome to another Scardcast unit by unit video. Today we're looking at the Drukari Venom. Fast, sleek, small and dangerous. Let's begin. The Dark Kid. Hello and welcome to another unit by unit video here on Scardcast. I am Skyri, your grateful host. And in this series of videos, we've been talking about the new Drukari Codex, unit by unit. So make sure you check out the playlist and the link down below if you've missed all the other ones. Start from the beginning because we're almost going to be done. Today we're looking at the Venom. Now, if this is the first time that you've tuned in to one of my unit by unit videos, I like discussing the lore of the unit, kind of how they fit into the army, and then we talk about their in-game sort of statistics, things that work for that sort of, uh, things that work, things that don't work, how I like to use them, etc. For more in-depth analysis, I do Patreon exclusive videos, tactical stuff. You can check the link down below as well for that. But... The Venom is sort of like an iconic mini transport for the Drukhari army. Um, they are pretty cool. Um, they, they used to be used, originally they showed up as a choice for the Harlequins. Back in the, uh, when Harlequins in 3rd edition, they had a, um, a sort of... Um, uh, experimental rule set for Harlequins. It was like a chapter approved, like that sort of thing. And um, Venoms themselves uh, were like a small enough transport to go through the webway. So Harlequins used them. That uh, now morphed into more of the Sky Weaver, uh, um, the Star Weaver, Star Weaver, Star Weavers, which are the transports for the Harlequins, and they're bigger and carry more infantry than a Venom. I like the Star Weaver a lot, but Venoms have a very specific role in Drukhari Codex. So, let's take a look at it. Of course, I read excerpts from the Drukhari book, so go out and get your own so that you can follow along with the story. I get into character. Let's begin, shall we? <coughs> <coughs> Venoms. The Drukhari rely heavily on surprise and raw speed, and hence their skycraft are all fast and manoeuvrable. The most deft of all Comrite transports is the Venom, an arrow-sit swift skimmer that carries an elite cadre of warriors into battle to strike like a poison dart at the heart of their foe. Rather than present a single obvious target, a Drukhari strike force will attack in waves with a dizzying number of craft pouring out of the fractured skies in order to confound the guns of the foe. Although a few Drukhari vehicles may be intercepted by the flak of particularly lucky enemies, even a disciplined gun battery cannot hope to stop the entirety of the malignant swarm that descends upon it. Furthermore, as any experienced Drukhari commander knows, it is the largest and most populous transports that are the target priority of well-drilled enemy soldiers. So, it is that the most devious Drukhari ride to war upon craft no larger than the vipers of the Azuriani, or the sky chariots of the ancient Eldari Empire that preceded them. Speed is paramount. Should even a single venom penetrate the foe's defenses, it can be enough to sow the seeds of destruction. Those embarked upon its open deck are free to shoot at opponents as they fly past, and the venom itself bears a frightening amount of firepower as well as blade veins to slice through enemies in its path. It is said that a skilled venom pilot can even traverse the parts of the webway designed only for the passage of single individuals. For this reason, Venoms are very popular with Comrite hunters. Despite its small size, the Venom is the ideal craft for carrying small cliques of hand-picked warriors who are well used to fighting as a coordinated unit. Though most 
Drukhari lords and champions will lead their Cablite warriors into battle from a personalized raider, this does not always sit well with those who prefer not to consort with mere foot soldiers. Many Archons ride to war surrounded by the deadliest members of their court, and for them, the fast and compact form of the Venom is ideally suited. Usually, those Drukhari nobles, too arrogant or paranoid to trust even their own bodyguards, ride in a Venom by themselves. Though who, those who have seen the denizens of the Dark City in action know that a single warrior is sometimes all it takes, and that a Venom's true poison is in its passengers, not its guns. Boom! The Venom. Small swarm craft that descend upon the enemy with lots of guns and have poison at its heart. A cadre of killy stuff. <laughs> And that's exactly what the Venom does. So let's dive into the Venom itself, rules-wise, so you understand what a Venom is, how it works, and what you can get for it, or from it, in your games of Warhammer 40,000. Being that there are two main transports, you have the Raider, you have the Venom, um, in the Codex themselves. The Raider is more is bigger and has like a more say versatile gun in the in the disintegrated cannon, or the Dark Lance and anti tank firepower. Uh, the Venom itself has its own unique role. It is full power level, so sixty five points with basic gear. You have well, these are before chapter approved, just basic stuff out of the Codex. It's moving sixteen, has weapon skill four. Ballista skill 3, strength and toughness 5, it is 6 wounds, has 2 attacks in combat, has leadership 7, has a 4 plus armor save. So, first thing I notice when I see this from the Venom is it does not degenerate. Whether it has 1 wound left or whether it has full wounds left, it does not degenerate. So it's always going to be hitting in combat, always going to have the same amount of attacks, always going to move the same distance. It's a very reliable tank has four wounds less than a raider however it makes up for that with some cool special rules um, it is armed with a single twin splinter rifle a splinter cannon and its blade veins so the twin splinter rifle is a 24 inch gun rapid fire 2 ap0 damage 1 poison weapon so it wounds anything that's not a vehicle on fours vehicles it wounds on sixes Poison is great against high toughness targets like a Carnifex or a Hive Tyrant, but it's not that good against things like Grots or Ripper Swarms that are like really low toughness. So you have to find a good mix between Poison Firepower and Firepower that's based on strength values to clear enemy chaff. It also has a Splinter Cannon, which is a 36 inch range, Rapid Fire 3, AP, AP 0, Damage 1, Poison Weapon. So, at 18 inches, that gun has six shots, and it's also a poison weapon. So, at its base cost, if you get really close, which is 12 inches, you'll have six, seven, eight, nine, ten poison shots from a tiny little tank. Not bad for something that isn't too big. It also has its blade veins, which gives it strength four in combat, minus one AP and one damage. You do miss out on using its strength 5 if you use the blade veins, but you make up for that with its minus 1 AP. Because it's hitting on 4s, yeah, the off chance is you'll kill 1 or 2 infantry models in combat. Not too bad. So, it does have some war gear options. It's not just... But it's very limited in its options. It can take an additional splinter cannon by replacing its twin splinter rifle. That means that for an extra 10 points, you can take the twin splinter rifle away and put two splinter cannons on it, which are both rapid fire three at 36 inches. So within 18 inches, it becomes a 12 shot gun platform. This gets really good when you have four or five or six venoms that all get to shoot a target with 12 poison shots, hitting on threes, wounding on fours. Combine that 
with something like the Writ of the Living Muse, so rerolling ones to hit from an Archon, rerolling ones to wound, or ignoring cover, or rerolling ones to hit with a uh, Flayed Skull, or the extra six inches of range from Obsidian Skull, you get a lot of versatility out of a Venom. This model may take items from the Vehicle Equipment list. Now, the Vehicle Equipment list is pretty standard. There's four different things. Chain Snares, Grizzly Trophies, Phantasm and Shock Prowl. However, two of them cannot be used by Venoms. So you cannot use a Phantasm on a Venom. You cannot use a Shock Prowl on a Venom. So they're left with two choices. Chain Snares and Grizzly Trophies. So what do they do? They're a little bit, um, I want to say, very situational. <laughs> because the Grizzly Trophies, for example, are a, an upgrade you put on tank. And when the enemy fails a morale test and models run, uh, and at least one, and the unit is within six inches of a model with grizzly trophies, after the models run, you roll a d6 for each model that ran, and on a six, an additional model runs. So, very situational in the sense that if you kill 10 or 15 models out of a unit, and they roll and they lose an extra six or seven models from the unit, and you have grizzly trophies on your venom that's nearby, you can roll six more dice and on a six additional models flee. So not really useful against like cheap infantry that's designed to be a screen, but could be useful against uh, multi-wound creatures that all of a sudden see each additional model running as an expense. Now, the upgrade isn't that expensive, so you know, if you have a few here or there, it could come in handy. The odd model that makes it, that you additionally make run away will pay for it right away, in terms of point for point. The chain snares allow the Venom to reroll ones to hit when attacking with his blade veins. With two attacks, hitting on fours, rerolling ones, can be handy, however, there's lots of different ways to get a, a Venom to just reroll misses, like having a Succubus nearby if it's a Witch Cult Venom, or having an Archon nearby if it's a Cabal Venom. So you don't really need the Blade Veins. However, if you're running a list for some reason that you just want to have all your vehicles charge in, and all your characters are near, nowhere near to provide rerolls, then maybe that can come in handy. Plus, they look cool with all the chains hanging off them. What are its abilities? The first is open topped. So um, models embarked can shoot out of it. So um, if you've got a unit of Cabalite Warriors inside, they can shoot out of it with their ranged weapons. If you've got witches, they can also shoot out of it with their pistols. If you've got an Archon that has a gun inside, he can shoot out of it. So it's really good to move around, it has a lot of movement, so it can move, get into range easily, and you can shoot out of it. Blasters and things like that work great inside, so you can shoot out of it like that. If uh, the model falls back, the passengers cannot shoot, even though the Venom itself can. So that's a caveat that's important to keep in mind. Venoms have a flicker field as well. Minus one to hit for attacks in the shooting phase. So it's got an inherent minus one to hit. This is where the Venom really differs from the Raider. It might be less wounds, it might be um, easier to kill, theoretically, but the minus one to hit makes it very hard for most enemies to get reliable hits against it. That minus one to hit goes a long way in the shooting phase. Combine that with something like lightning fast reflexes, all of a sudden you have venom with minus two to hit, making it very hard to take out that one venom. Even though it's only got six wounds, can be tough to crack open a venom if you can't land any hits on it. It does explode, which uh, on a d6 of a six, everything within six inches suffers one mortal wound, so it's a, it does explode. And it does have a night shield, which does give it a five plus invulnerable save against ranged weapons, which means even, even though it has a four plus armor save, most last cannon attacks or auto cannons or things that really want to attack it, um, not only are they suffering negative modifiers to hit, but anything that does hit and wound will more than likely, or will have a good chance of just bouncing off the flicker field, which makes it even more survival, even though it's a tiny little venom. They are surprisingly tough. They can transport five Drukhari infantry models other than Grotesque, Scourge, and Skyboard. So no Helions, no Grotesque, because they're too bulky, they're too big, no Scourge, that makes sense. 
And something that I really like about Drukhari infantry is the fact that one Venom can carry infantry from different obsessions, cults, cabals, or covens. You can have one Archon in a Venom, that is from the Flayed Skull, with a Succubus from the Cult of Strife, with a Homunculus with the Prophets of Flesh. And they all hang out in the same Venom. It's one of the cool things I like about the Drukhari transports, is you can mix and match who goes in transports. A lot of the time, transports are restricted to units from their same chapter or cult or dynasty. So it's very it's a very important distinction to make that you can take the vehicles that suit you best and then put in the infantry that suits you best in the vehicles that suit you best. It's a really cool dichotomy that I highly recommend you explore. For example, taking a black heart cabal venom gives it a six plus in your to suffering save. So a six up feel no pain essentially. You can take then a couple of units of Obsidian Rose to put them inside the Venom. This increases the Obsidian Rose infantry to an extra six inches. So their, their, uh, their rifles are now rapid fire 30 inches. If you've got like um, Cabalite Warriors in there, their blast becomes 24 inches. And all of a sudden you have a Venom that has a lot of shots at 18 inches or 36 inches with an infantry squad inside that has additional range, which means you can stay further back and have more weapons on your enemy. You're not restricted. And that is very versatile. Very cool. It has the Eldari Drukhari, and it is either a Hemogulus Coven, Cabal, or Witch Cult um, faction keyword. As a Coven, doesn't really gain too much, except... If you have a homunculus nearby, it gets plus one toughness, so they could be toughness, six venoms, if you really want them to be. You can make it a cabal, so a uh, flayed skull makes it reroll misses and ignore cover and move faster, like an 18-inch move venom is really, really fast. Uh, it can be obsidian rose for extra range, it can be poison tongue to reroll ones to wound with its poison weapons. Since it's equipped with poison weapons, it gets a lot of mileage out of that one as well. It's one of my favorites. And it can be um, Black Heart, which gives it a six up, feel no pain. That one is my absolute favorite. Why? Six wounds with a six up, feel no pain feels more like eight to ten wounds sometimes when you're rolling well against D6 damage weapons. This means that uh, Venom can survive a full Meltagun blast, it can survive a last cannon hit, uh, and the enemy has to then shoot it again with more guns which I find is incredible for a 75 point model with an upgrade. It can also be a witch cult. So you can make it advance and charge if you want. You can make them uh, be able to shoot again, things like that. But your obsessions that you pick for your detachments will really determine how you use the transport itself. If you have any questions about different tactical stuff like that, send me a message. I'd love to help you out if you're developing a list or if you have a friend that plays Drukhari, that is just kicking your butt and you need to find out how to fight against it as well. It is a vehicle, transport, fly, and venom. And that concludes our chat on the venom. So what do you think? Do you prefer the raider or the venom? A question like that is something I've answered in a tactical video for the Patreons. If you'd like to join the growing Patreon community and help me create content here on YouTube and on other avenues like Twitch, Facebook or Instagram, check the link down below to get connected with the global community of denizens. I am Skari, your grateful host, signing off. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Until the next video, Skari out.